Testing, testing, testing. All right, audio looks good there. Blah, 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 blah. What's up? I am simply doing a show and tell because I have finished my Game & Watch collection, you see. Windowed. Tell your friends, tell your children. Okay. So I'm going to mute the stream itself because now I know the audio levels are good. Turn that up just a hair. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Just set that like so. Yes, the handheld ones. They uh, they didn't make any console ones, unless you want to count the tabletops, which uh, I have one of those, which I will be showing off later. Uh, the tabletops are pretty pretty big, about the size of a virtual boy. Um, I'll get into that later. I also, here's my phone. I'm going to send a notification out to everybody that I am now streaming. Currently streaming show and tell of my game and watch collection at twitch.tv slash pushblock gaming. Oh, cool. I am connected to voice. You guys are on a pushblock stream right now, technically. Yeah, I just came to um, to let you all know I'm doing a show and tell stream of my entire Game and Watch collection. So, well, tune in and you'll learn some stuff. I even have the unofficial Game and Watch collector's guide here to help fact check, show off some. Uh, they're all really cool. I have like eleven. Alright, there's that. Put that, social. Okay. You don't see the tweet. What tweet? I don't have access to Twitter right now. I have to... Oh boy. Ugh. Oh, I never made a, a tweet to let everybody know. Here. Still says salty Sunday. I don't. I thought I changed that. Wait, did you just do that? What did you just do then? 
I was on Discord. Yeah, I was I was doing it on Discord, not Twitter. Okay, I guess I'll hit one up on Facebook too. On the discussion group. go all right I guess I should just get started at this point just get my projector view going here so I suppose um, okay so my game and watch collection includes one of every type of game and watch um, there are over 60 game and watches total uh, but they, they come in like series. Um, there's the silver series, uh, gold series. This is all in order, by the way, I think. Here, I can I actually have the uh, unofficial Game & Watch Collector's Guide. If you are ever thinking about getting into Game & Watches, I highly recommend this book. Um, it's about the uh, $40, but it's beautiful. It has details on every single game and watch down to how many were made um, what the gameplay is what each alarm is um, when they were released and th there's like an entire uh, biography section on Gunpei Yokoi who um, who Invented the Game and & Watch, and also invented a whole bunch of other things, like uh, he invented the Super Scope, the Virtual Boy, we don't talk about that one, uh, the Famicom Control, he invented the D-Pad, so I guess that's just one of his smaller things he invented. He invented it actually for one of the Game & Watches too, uh, Donkey Kong, the dual screen Donkey Kong Game & Watch, uh, because it was a good way to fit uh, all the controls inside of that package. Um, he invented the Game & Watches, he invented the Game Boy. Um, unfortunately, he died in a car uh, accident. Well, he was involved in a car accident. He actually, he didn't, he wasn't in the car when he got hit, but he died in 1997. But he invented all the different types of Game Boys up until right before the Game Boy Color. So, anyway, um, this will be my fact check, basically. Like, uh, if anybody has any questions on the Game & Watches that I show, uh, they can just ask me, and I'm sure it'll be in the book if I don't already know it. Um, and it'll let me go in chronological order here. So, the first series was the Silver Series. Then came the Gold Series. Um, then it was... Blah, blah, blah. Tell you what. Then it was the widescreens. The widescreens and the dual screens came out around the same time in 1982. Um, after that came, I want to say, the, the sideways dual screens. Those were like 1983. Those the, They opened like books. I'll show you that um, when we get to the Mario Brothers one. Uh... Da, 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 da. There was a lot of dual screens, man. A lot of dual screens. Or they didn't call them dual screens. They called them multi-screens. Uh, there was the new widescreen. 
which uh, a lot of them were remakes of other earlier Game & Watches, um, like or, or ports from other Game & Watches, like uh, the Mario Cement Factory new widescreen was a port of the tabletop version. Um, I'll get into that when I bring out my tabletop and my new widescreen. I'm actually also going to be showing you guys how to take apart a Game & Watch, uh, repair it, restore it, and put it back together. And let me tell you, it takes like 10 minutes. These things are super simple. Um, new widescreens are also where a lot of the crystal screens went. So, da -da -da, 1983, a lot of it was 1983, and they kept going. They got the Tabletop series, you got the uh, Versus series, where you have actually two players can play it on one Game & Watch. I'll show you that in a sec. You got the Panorama screen one, which is actually my favorite, um, either the Panorama or the Crystal, which has color and sort of like a weird backlit thing. I'll show you how the technology works when we get to the Panorama. Um, anyway, they all come in series. There's like anywhere from two to six games in a series. I, my collection, in order to be complete for me, uh, the collection basically needed to have one of every series of Game & Watch. One silver, one gold, um, one widescreen, one dual screen of each type, vertical and horizontal. One versus one crystal screen, one panorama screen, one new wide screen, one super color, one tabletop, and I think that covers it. I have about 11 Game and Watches, um, and I guess we'll just move in chronological order. As you can see right now, I have displayed Ball. This is the first ever Game and Watch ever to be released all the way back in, I want to say, April of 1980. And I can actually check that here. Blah, 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 blah. Ball. Release, April 1980, yep. So, Game & Watches, being small, and I mean small, they are, the Silver Series are tiny. Um, like, here's my mic. It's a Samson mic. And then here's the Game & Watch. Absolutely tiny. Um, it's about the size of a playing card. And about as thick as... Like... Uh, a modern phone. Like, here's my phone. It's an Android. And then here's a Game & Watch. Very small. Of course, Game & Watches came in all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but when they first came out, they were uh, basically designed to fit into a shirt pocket. So, being small and being watches, they use watch batteries. As you can see here, the uh, thin ones, actually Game & Watches used a ton of different batteries over the years. The uh, thin ones use these tiny little thin watch batteries. The uh, dual screens use a bit thicker ones. They kind of look like two stacked on top of each other. Like that. You can see the difference. So, let me just do that. On the back you can see there's text there. It says um, it says the model number, in this case AC01. If you ever want to go on eBay and you want to get the perfect Game & Watch, you type in the model number. If they got the model number, you know it's going to be a good find. Uh, they know what they're talking about, basically. Then uh, you've got the battery rating, which is like... I guess you don't want to fry the thing, but I've used different batteries on different Game & Watches before. They just don't close in the battery cover. You can... See, they just won't fit. You can use them to test, but they won't fit in for actual gameplay. Um, 
Then it tells you which battery to use. This one uses two LR43s. Um, you can get those at like Walgreens or Amazon or something. And then it shows what year it was made. It says 1980 by Nintendo. Patent pending, made in Japan. If you want to know, some people will try to sell the... Uh, they made a reproduction of this for Nintendo Club members. Some people, if, they, if you ever want to know whether you're getting the reproduction or the real one from 1980, you got to look at the back. The back will have Nintendo Club, Nintendo Power, whatever. Uh, on the back. This one will just say 1980. So, this is a very, very early Game & Watch. The first one ever made. So, it's very limited compared to later ones. As you can see, there's only there's only two screws on the back of this thing. That's all it takes to take this thing apart. And uh, there's no color, there's no overlays or anything like that. It's just black and white. And they were so oh geez, sorry about that. They were so like strict on space and how many cells they had that the clock doesn't even have a colon in the middle. You can see there. And it doesn't, um, unlike every other Game & Watch that came after it, it doesn't actually have an alarm. Um, it does have a clock, but it does not have an alarm. You can see here, if I can just get up close and personal, you see a little ACL. Every Game & Watch has that. Um, let me just get my tools here. It's a little button. So, you got it in clock mode right now. So, if you want to reset it, you press ACL. It basically resets the whole Game & Watch, kind of like taking out the batteries, put it in back in. It's a bit healthier for it, though. So, this is where you set the clock. If you want to set the actual clock of a Game & Watch, you have to press ACL or whenever you put in the batteries. And then um, you press the left. Usually, it's left for hour, right for minute. So... What's, what's the time right now? We got 11.55, so this one actually doesn't even have AM and PM. I guess it doesn't need it because it doesn't have an alarm, but 11, and then you click the right all the way for 55. I've seen other balls use uh, military time, but that's only for like the uh, ports on mobile mobiles and stuff like that. So, and then you just hit time, and then your Game & Watch is now a functioning watch. And it, I mean, for 1980, uh, that would be pretty awesome to have a game and a watch because digital watches themselves were pretty um, new at the time anyway. Like 1980, people were still, it was basically still the 70s. Um, so what's cool is, so it only shows hours and minutes on Game & Watches, but if you look closely, the game basically plays itself in increments of seconds. So if you want to find a, a ticking clock, like tick, 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 you just look at the Game & Watch playing itself. Tick, 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 and every Game & Watch will do this. Um, when it's in clock mode, it's basically a demo mode for... Um, it's basically a demo mode of itself in seconds. So, mo uh, most for most okay. So every game watch has game A, game B. Um, for most game watches, that's easy and hard mode. For versus, it's uh, two player, but we'll get into that later. So, for ball, it's really simple. Game A, you got two balls. Boom, boom, and it's super quiet, so I can hold it up to the mic. I don't know if you could hear all the beepies, but um, so the whole game, 
Um, most Game & Watches, you have three lives or three misses before it's game over. Um, but Ball, if you mess up once, it's over. That's it. I guess because they didn't have any, like, room to put the little icons. Or maybe it would just didn't have the programming power back then. But basically, if you mess up once, I'll do it right here. Crush. And that's it. That's all you get. Now, if you want to do game B, that's three balls. And it's not really as easy as it looks because one, like most Game & Watches, it, it never ends. Um, Game & Watches don't end. You don't beat them. I mean, you beat them, but they keep going. Some Game & Watches you can beat, but all it does is just give you a crap ton of points and then you just keep going. Um, and so as you go, it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And... Ooh. Since the balls are all on different heights, they all take a different amount of time to make their target. So there's like a really, like the one thing you'll see in Game & Watches is like beauty and simplicity and design. Oh, I missed. You can still move around. I never realized you can still move around after you lose. That's weird. <coughs> but it's like a big emphasis on <coughs> beauty and simplicity because they only had like a few segments to work with here. Yeah. See, for some reason they counted in tens. I don't know why. Um, I guess because they didn't actually want to do a different zero here. Man, so they didn't actually want to make digits for the zero. That's pretty crazy. So since they had so, so much limited tech to work with, you'll see that all of uh, game, most game watches are like beautifully simple yet challenging. They're like the perfect bathroom break things, and they're like way better than most mobile games. All right, I'll move on to the next. Oh, another thing about game watches. They don't turn off since they're clocks. They don't turn off. So unless you want to run through a ton of batteries, um, just take out the batteries when you're done with them. Um, unless you actually want to use it as a clock or a watch or an alarm, which I have, since their alarms are very annoying. Um, hey. Uh, then you can leave the batteries in, but if but for most collectors, just, these things are expensive. These batteries are like five bucks for a pair. So just take them out when you're done. Now, after 1980, after the Silver Series was launched with four games, if any of you play Smash Brothers, that's where, um, game, first of all, this is where Game Watch's throws come from. This one right here. Um, it also released Manhole, not Manhole, Vermin, which is his down smash. Um, f the first uh, rendition of Fire, which not a lot of people even know exists. Most people just look at the widescreen one, which is where his upbeat comes from. Um, then you have Judge. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Judge, which is where his side B comes from, and then Flagman, which is where his up tilt comes from, which is basically just a game as Simon says. So, uh, next, is after Silver, what do you get? You get Gold. So, this one's marked 1981. So, this was one year after the Silver Series. You get the Gold Series. Wow, shiny, beautiful. A lot of these game watches have metallic finishes. Um, and a lot of the times you'll see writing on the back. That's common. I mean, it w these were just Game Boys, basically. The original price for a Silver Series Game & Watch... In 1980 was, uh, this is a German book, so it's in euros, 23.78 euros. So, 25 bucks in 1980, be around $50 in today's money. Let's check on some stuff real quick.
<laughs> Credit card size. Yeah, they're really... Uh, can't see the most recent chats. All right, hang on. Let me change that. I think I can do it like this. Boop, 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 boop. Whoop, oh. There we go. Yeah, I didn't even know you were talking to me. My B. Yeah, uh, credit card size. In fact, let's see if I can get something that everybody knows. Ugh. I'll be right back. Oh boy, okay, so, for size comparison, I have you, for you, a 3DS XL Animal Crossing Edition. This is a new 3DS XL. Complete with Isabel's charming face. This is a Game & Watch Gold series. Extremely small. In fact, here is a new 3DS, or here's a 3DS cartridge next to a Gold Series Game & Watch. And Silver Series. These guys, these guys are the same size. So, if you put... It's not even two 3DS cartridges in uh, size here. I'll use the, I'll use the new 3DS XL for... Uh, for all my size comparisons from now on. Because everybody knows what that looks like. So. Let's get my window projection going on. There we go. Okay. Now, so one year later, Gold Series comes out. Same size, but of a, uh, a few improvements. One of which is an alarm. See that little button right there? Alarm. Now, um, another improvement, which is a huge deal, if you're intending to use this thing as a clock, let's turn that down just a hair. If you're intending to use this thing as a clock, is a kickstand. So 
So technically I don't even need my Wii U charger to uh, display this because it has its own built-in display. As you can see here. And it'll stand up like that. Makes sense once they added the alarm that they would add that because it's basically now just a clock you set at the side of your bed. So put the batteries in, uses the same batteries. In fact, you can see there's four screws on the back now. Wow. And in fact, if I just I just want to take these batteries out again just to show you. The ball was just black and white. But if we go right here, we see there's overlays now. There's overlays to give the games more scenery. I'm just actually going to turn down my microphone a bit. There we go. Yeah, too loud. Okay. So. There's a little cage there. And once I start this thing up, you can see they had a lot more cells to fill in. Lion is actually where Game & Watch gets his F-tilt with a chair. See right there, and we just kick the kickstand out real quick. Which will be a recurring theme on, mo on uh, most flat Game & Watches. After this point, they'll all have kickstands of varying quality. So, you can see. Actually has a colon, and an AM and PM and three lives and you can see this little bear guy up top he's your alarm he rings his bell this is where game watch gets all of his bell stuff um, so okay oh, I'm gonna use a toothpick here to press these buttons because you're supposed to use like a pencil or something but I don't want to mark up these buttons anymore then I have to See, they're just kind of little discs. I've taken apart almost every Game & Watch I own. Cleaned it, restored it. Rubbing alcohol is your friend. So, right now I'll just hit time. So it just defaults to midnight, which is not that far off, to be honest. And you can see it's in uh, that mode. So I'm going to press the alarm button here. And then this little bell pops up. When your Game & Watch has a little icon next to the alarm, that means your alarm is on. I'm going to set it for uh, 12.01 here. Set the time. So the alarm is on. If you press alarm again, then pick time, alarm turns off. But I'm going to put it on just to show you guys what it's like. Uh, most Game & Watches have very simple alarms. You see the lions moving every second. Bop, 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 bop. Oh, there we go. The bear is ringing his bell. Now I'll put it right next to the mic. Sounds a bit like a heart monitor, I know, but that's all you get in 1981, my guys. And that'll keep ringing for a long, long, long time. Important for business meetings, stuff like that. So the gameplay itself, you're basically just trying to cage in these lions. Oh, shit. Man, this game is actually really hard because the lions move basically based on RNG. You don't know where they're going to end up. You have to kind of react, put your chair in the way. Plus, it's hard to stream at the same time. And the buttons are not as responsive as they could be, especially the down buttons. I've cleaned these things multiple times, and they still act up. you got to really press them. But, I mean... 
Whoa. This uh, game is very old, so it'll be turning 37 this year. <laughs> so uh, you got to cut it some slack. You can see when you lose, the lion comes out, chases your little guy up into the trees. Super cute. Not much else to say about the gold series. Um, it's where a lot of really, it's, it's actually one other thing about the gold series. First of all, Lion shows up in Flat Zone 2 and X, but um, the Gold series is what Flat Zone Melee is based on. Mainly the helmet one, which is also where his dash attack is from. Um, all of that will be in my Flat Zone trivia video coming up. That'll be my next push block content upload. Figure this would be a good way to whet people's appetites. So, moving on from gold, as you can see, they were very small. Again, let me just compare the screen sizes here to a, th a new 3DS XL. It's, um, it's not much of a contest. So, obviously, People needed more playing space, right? I need to pull my Game & Watch table closer to me. So, what's next? When regular screen is not enough? Wide screen. Early wide screen. This is what Flat Zone... 2 and X are based on. They're based on these early widescreen ones. This one in particular is Fire Attack. Um, one of the black uh, widescreens. A lot of them were gold. Uh, Chef, Fire, um, I want to say, not Manhole. Manhole is already gold. Let me see. Well, let's check the book. Uh, widescreen parachute yeah here we go parachute da, 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 da. egg uh, octopus which is where his final smash comes from Popeye you gotta understand Mr. Game & Watch was not a character until Melee uh, Mr. Game & Watch was a character invented in Melee to represent all Game & Watches. Um, so a lot of the times in Game & Watches you'll be playing as Mickey Mouse, Popeye, uh, Mario. Um, but Game & Watch himself, the little character, is based on the tiny little um, generic people that you... Uh, either play as or save or you, the kind you see in Game & Watches, they had to be shaped like that to give a humanoid shape with a tiny amount of space that they had available. So you had to give them a big nose to show where the head was. And you got to give them big old hands and little weird pea body because uh, that's the only way. It's, it's just like a little stick figure, basically. So Popeye, Chef, Mickey Mouse... Egg, which is a censored version of Mickey Mouse. And by censored, I mean it wasn't licensed. Fire. Turtle Bridge is actually another uh, black one. The black ones had these little stripes. Very 80s. And the controls, very rudimentary. Just buttons. Hit. <laughs> so. They do use the same batteries as the Gold and Silver series. These uh, super thin batteries. Pop. Pop that in there. So you see, this is a very busy game and watch. Look at all these. Look at all those cells. So in this one, you are uh, a, I guess, a settler <laughs> in. Uh, 
like Civil War times era, maybe a little earlier, and you're defending a fort from evil Indians trying to burn it down. Yeah, it's it was a different time back then. So you play game A. You got four ways to hammer these guys. You wait till they get right up, boom, you knock them off. So you got to wait until they get up close to you and then bang. So <clears throat> there's two climbing up and then there's two on each side throwing torches down at you or throwing torches up on these cliff sides here up towards the top. And true to Game & Watches, uh, they fly at different speeds. So it uses its segmented movement to its advantage to make it part of the gameplay. Bop. So you have to keep track of two different timed things happening on either side of you. And it gets really intense after a while. This is also one of the Game & Watches that gives you bonuses for if you like play perfectly. If you get like 200 points, which each hit gives you two points. If you get 200 points without losing a life, then all of your hits start doing uh, five points or ten points or something like that. So it's easy to rack up a high score on this thing. Oh no. Your miss is a little uh, Indian guy. He looks kind of happy he got missed. So you can see this is where Game Watch gets his F smash from. So really cool effect actually with the uh, fort burning. Look at that. Really cool idea. You can see the little, pull it up real close. See the little Indian guys telling you you got to miss. Now this one actually has two overlays to give it a sort of weird 3D effect. There's an overlay all the way behind the characters and there's an overlay that goes over the characters. So it's kind of like, it's it kind of gives this weird 3D effect. So the fort and stuff is in the background. But the cacti, the cacti and the cliffs, those are in the foreground. It's a really cool uh, thing going on. And uh, as for the alarm, if I just ACL this real quick. Here we go. You can see the alarm guy is this little uh, army dude playing the bugle and it's like beep 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 so every game watch has its own little alarm character super cool in my opinion now <clears throat> I'm gonna get to the more famous game and watches now which means I have to put away the small batteries and get out the big boys well not the biggest boys but some of the big boys. So get out these thick boys before I start. Let me just see here. Four women. Looks like a game you got from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit more expensive than a game at uh, from McDonald's. Fortunately, or unfortunately. So, what's better than one widescreen? Let me just show you. Eat your heart out, Nintendo DS. Let's get that out of the way. We have the first Game & Watch multi-screen. Expecting that to step back a bit look at that folds up just like a DS but it's actually a lot smaller than a DS as you can see here is a new 3DS XL 
And then here is a uh, an over under multi screen game and watch. It's pretty thick, yeah, um, but it's way way smaller. So we got our battery cover. This one in particular is from 1982. This is Oil Panic, as you can see from the front. They made a ton of multi-screen game and watches. A ton of multi-screen game and watches. Anything from Blackjack to The Legend of Zelda to Donkey Kong. They had the entire first level of Donkey Kong in handheld form way before the Game Boy ever came out. And it was actually the first thing to ever have a D-pad in it back in 1983. Or 82, was it? Maybe it was 82. We'll check the book. Eighty-two, June of eighty-two. <clears throat> there we go. So we have our oil panic guy here, top screen. Which, by the way, these are the exact same size and they work the exact same way as the wide screens. Yeah. So if you're ever uh, repairing a Game & Watch multi-screen, you can use, you can just order two uh, widescreen pieces and it'll work. Taking it apart's a bit different because of uh, that <laughs> and the hinges. But uh, the screens themselves, repairing the screens is the exact same. So. The name of this game, the, on the top screen, you're catching oil dripping out of these pipes. And on the bottom screen, see if I can do this, you're pouring it into this guy. Oh, geez, it's really hard to do this because you got to multitask with these dual screens. So I'm going to just show the bottom screen here for a sec. So when you catch the oil, you can see that guy walking back and forth. I'm not actually controlling him. You actually pour the oil into his bucket and uh, you get points. So you get one point for each drop of bucket that you fill in. You can only hold three, just like gaming watches. But if you fill it all the way up, you get extra points because it's like a risk versus reward situation. You get three misses up top. So if you let the oil drip onto the ground, you get a miss. And you also get a, a, a miss for accidentally pouring it onto one of these customers here I'll show you what that looks like there we go and, that, and then I'll just pour it onto this guest right here he's like hey the hell man so super cool this one also has uh, overlays in the front and back so there's like it's like really I'll just set it into time mode for now all right let me just AC all this yeah set it into time mode for now so the time is actually displayed on the bottom there we go this is another game watch I actually had to repair um, when I got it, it was very cloudy. Game & Watch is... LCD technology does not age well. And uh, they're very simple, but... When you get like 30-year-old, you know, handheld devices that have been God knows where... Um, a lot of problems happen with them. As you can see, there's a lot of scratches on this one. But the inside, actually... The, the good thing about the dual screens is, since they clam shut... The insides usually look pretty pristine compared to a lot of the uh, naked ones. You can see him walking around, catching that oil. And on the bottom, you see the little patrons. So the alarm for this one, click on that. 
It's actually a little police officer. There we go. Ring the bell. This one was also in Flat Zone 2 and X. Um, it's also in Flat Zone Omega. This gas station right here, you fight on the uh, roof of that. So, that is a vertical Game & Watch, which is, are the much more common variants of them. They made a lot more vertical over-under style game, uh, multi-screens than they did side-by-side. -side. So let me show you one of those side-by-side -side ones here. Get my opener out. This one's got a locked battery cover for some, some odd reason. Meaning you need to hit, uh, use a damn screwdriver or something to get it open. Like this. Ah! It just sort of launches out. It makes me really worried that I'm going to accidentally break it off. After a while, these things get brittle. You gotta be careful. So. After putting the same type of batteries in. We have our side-by-side -side game and watch, which they open. This is a Mario Brothers one from 1983, and they open like Japanese books, in which we're used to um, books opening out like this on this side, but it actually opens right to left or left to right, like this. So, this is actually one of my favorite Game & Watches. Um, it is such a cool idea for um, a handheld system. Why not have something that fits in? First of all, this thing is thick. This thing is thick. So we bring out our new 3DS XL. This thing is much thicker. It is like a brick. There we are, show that. But because it's side by side, there we are, it's much shorter. So it's basically just like this big square. Show you here. So in this game, you're playing as uh, Mario and Luigi, obviously, Mario Brothers. But instead of the arcade Mario Brothers where you're plumbers, you are working at a bottle factory. Hooray. Oh, this is actually the first Game & Watch I ever bought. <clears throat> Got it for $30. I was super excited. I was like, oh my god, it's real? They actually exist? It's actually one of the, mo one of the more common Game & Watches you can get. You can get it for anywhere around $40 in decent condition, loose. Um, so if you're <clears throat> ever looking to buy a Game & Watch uh, and you're not getting one of the new widescreens, you want to get one of the fancier ones, get a Meyer Brothers one. Because this is actually one of the more fun Game & Watches to play. I wanted to make sure all the Game & Watches I had, I actually enjoyed playing. Um, I don't want to be one of those guys who just lets them collect dust. They're actually like really good for uh, bathroom breaks, car rides, stuff like that. Because they're, they're quick for like five, killing five minutes. So, in this game, you catch the uh, box in the conveyor belt as Mario. And then you pick him up and put him on the other side as Luigi. So, it's you have to manage both sides of the game at once. You can't let... Um, first of all, you can't let any boxes slide off the conveyor belt as they get more and more complete you'll see they actually get all nice and bowed up ready for packaging and you also have to make sure that you're watching the conveyor belt producer at the bottom right because that geez, see you have to make sure you keep an eye on this at all times because a new box could slip out at any time and uh, ruin your day. 
So, oh jeez, I want to. I'm I'm only playing this long to show you what happens when you load up the whole truck because this is actually one of the games. Not only does this game get faster and faster and faster as you go, but this game also offers brakes. Um, it's it's like a survival mode. So, oh Jesus, no. <sighs> Ugh. All right, so I'm just gonna try my best to not forget that. Oh my god, that was close. It was tipping off the conveyor belt there. It's so hard to stream and play this at the same time. Ugh. So, oh jeez, make sure that's good. All right. So as the boxes get more more complete, you get one point for each um, time one of the Mario Brothers picks up the box and puts it on the other side of the conveyor belt. No, now is not the time, kitty. Now is not the time. I have my cat. Yeah. <laughs> no. I cannot stop this thing. All right. Oh, that was close. So the truck is almost ready. As you can tell, um, this guy over here, he's like, Get in the truck, man! I gotta get this thing out by 3 o'clock! So he's getting pissed. The truck's uh, exhaust pipes are, like, going nuts. He's like, All right, truck started. Get everything in there and go. There we are. And then... Let me just put that, put that box there. Once you get eight boxes, the truck's full. And he's like, all right, time to take off. We got to get out of here. Oh, no! No! God, look how close. Look how close. He was like ready to go. One box away. Ugh. I will show this. Oh, by the way. When you mess up, your boss gets pissed. He's like, guys, what do I hire you for? Get your ass in gear, Mario. You were better off as a plumber. Better off as a plumber, you piece of shit. All right, so I'm going to try that one more time. <clears throat> Or a better way, I guess, would be ACLing the damn thing and just showing you. So, <clears throat> with all the cells lit up. So if Luigi messes up, do I live with people? No, I don't live with people. I live with a cat. <laughs> That's the only thing I live with. So, here we have Luigi getting scalded. And then when, when you uh, successfully load up a whole truck... As you can see here, the truck takes off like, and Mario over here. Yeah, there we are. And Luigi right here. Just a uh, point here. Luigi right here. They take a little like breather <laughs> and uh, let you gear up for the next round. Um, that's actually where Game & Watch's down taunt comes from. But I mean, this also has an alarm, just like every other Game & Watch. You can see right here, the alarm is actually like a lunch bell or something. <laughs> it's like beep, 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 beep. This one actually sounds a bit different. So, go right here, press the alarm. Da, 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 da time let me just set it if I can just set it out like this oh that's beautiful look at that what a beautiful display now it's a little bit harder to use these as like desktop clocks because you want to keep them clamshell close so they're more like watches in that regard that you can just carry with and uh, check the time like a cell phone. So I'm just waiting for that 12 to become a 1201. You can see right here, the alarm is set because the thing is there, but it's not ringing. 
hoopla. So just waiting for that to go off. If I'm only going to show alarms going off when they're different. Oh, here we go. Put the mic closer. So there you go. Just hit time to uh, cancel that out. And for those interested, I will be showing how to take apart one of the Game & Watches and fix it. It's actually going to be one of my new widescreens. This one right here. I'll get to that later. So now that we're done with the basic Game & Watches, it's time to get to the real funky ones. The real crazy looking ones. This is where they started being all gimmicky. So, take away that. Starting with the Super Color. Wow, look at all that Super Color. It's really hard to tell because of the blue LED light. But uh, the bottom layer is purple. This is green, this is blue. There's like a stripe of red and then there's like a weird like yellow or something. Like normal color. Yeah, you could kind of see it better like this way. Basically they're like, let's add a color overlay over all of it. So, wow, it's no longer black and white. Not really, it's just, they just put a piece of plastic over the the black characters. If you took out the overlay, it would just be a normal Game & Watch. If you want real color Game & Watches, get yourself a panorama. Or a tabletop if you can afford it. And don't want to lug it around. So, but it's still a really fun game. This one is Spitball Sparky. If you ever played against a Game & Watch and he hit you with Toot Toot, or he up aired you a lot, you can thank this little guy, Spitball Sparky. Let me just check on things real quick. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, so. This blue is really messing with the color. What if I turn it down a bit? That's not so bad. All right, so the thing about these super colors is that they're really fucking tall. They are really, really tall. They are basically the size and shape of a modern phone. In fact, I'll show you. <clears throat> Here's my phone. It is a droid, as you can tell. Droid. These are basically the same size. Supercolor is a bit shorter. Granted, I have a case on. And it's basically the same thickness. So if you have dealt with uh, modern phones for the past, I don't know, four years or so, then the Supercolor should be really... Um, familiar to you. Sorry, I had to... I feel like I've messed something up. I'm going to put this there. These are the same exact... Sorry, I'm just checking something. Damn, I don't know. It's a little too tight. I'm gonna put that back on the ball. Put that back on the lion. Okay. Anyway, so thing with uh, the super color. Um, I don't know a lot about it because they only made two of them. Um, there was only two super colors ever produced. Two different ones, at least. Da -da -da -da. Tabletop, Panorama, Supercolor. There was this one, Spitball Sparky, 
and um, Crab Mania? Crab Grab. Crab Grab. I don't understand what Crab Grab is. Um, I didn't even think it was a real Game & Watch when I first saw Crab Grab because it, it looks like something that someone would make to make up, like to bootleg a Game & Watch. But I got Spitball Sparky because it has Game & Watch in it. It has your boy. It has your boy Spitball Sparky in there. Now these things are thick. Like this this color overlay is covered with this huge thick layer of plastic. I feel like you could shoot it and nothing would happen. Unfortunately that means it's kind of scratched and cloudy. But it's not going to break. So that's good. So uh, Spitball Sparky came out February 1984. So this is before all the panoramas came around and actually gave color to Game & Watches and the tabletops and stuff like that. Um, so Spitball Sparky, they only sold 250,000 units. Um, to get a loose one, you're looking at like $80 for one around this quality. There we are. But what it essentially is, is it's a game of uh, Arkanoid or Breakout. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. So you start with the ball on your mouth and you blow it. And the thing is you can either hold the ball on your mouth. Oh, hello. For just like a split second. Oh, man, this is so hard to get good lighting on. Let's see if I can just brighten it up. There we go. I know there's a glare, but I want you to see Spitball Sparky. So you blow it, and then you, you puff a little air, and it... Oh, Jesus, this is hard to play. Um, and if it's in the purple zone, it'll actually blow the ball back up before it finishes its like little arc. So there's a lot more strategy involved than a game like Arkanoid, where you just have to get lucky to hit the last one. In this game, you can actually manipulate the ball to hit whatever block you want. If you're good enough. So, because you can end its trajectory early. See right there, you just intercept. And then if you want it to go straight up, you let it hit your mouth, then blow it back up. Like that. And then when you finish a stage, you get a chunk of points and you move on to the next stage. And this um, actually has different levels. Which is um, pretty intense for a Game & Watch from 1984. A lot of Game & Watches from, like, before 85 didn't really have different levels. You just sort of, they just sort of got harder. Like, it was, like, one level that progressively got harder. Boom. Get more points, boy. Wow. Um, so you can see this little thing going back and forth. I mean, this is, like, a perfectly serviceable game of Arkanoid. And then you got these ones that are just going back like that. Uh-oh, it's going for me. So you get the gist. Oh, no, I broke did it. All right, I'm just going to lose on purpose here. Let's see, I broke it. Oh, no. You can see up top, I got misses. Uh, um... You can see the labels. Shooter. <laughs> um, so you got your ACL buttons and you got your alarm button here. The alarm doesn't sound like any different than the widescreens and the golds. It's just like a basic beep, beep, beep. So I'm not going to feel compelled to show you guys. Um, there's nothing else really to say about it. It does have color. And the color is used in the gameplay. Um, the purple zone... You can see here, denotes where your air blast will actually hit, which is kind of cool how they made Game & Watch's up air work exactly like that. Like, you can use your mouth to hit, but you, the air also affects it, so it's kind of a cool uh, way that they coded that move. If only it actually worked as a cool move. All right, take the batteries out of this one. So, relatively... Harmless gimmick. Let's add color, sort of, for the super color. <clears throat> but strap on, people, okay? Strap on. 
because now we're going to get into the versus series. This is what a versus series looks like. I'll just stick it on the man. This Wii U charger pad is like perfect for this thing. So I'll just turn this down a bit. Here's a versus series. Micro versus is what they call them. And you think, oh, okay, this looks like a Game Boy Advance. Well, where's the controls? Watch this. You open it up like this. Boom. There's your controls, my guys. So you roll these actually like roll out like this. Whoop. They spin out like that. Sort of wind. They got little uh, winders in the back, so you can wind them back up. Here, let's turn up the. So you can see, you got little winders to wind them back up. So, um, putting the batteries in these things is a pain in the ass. They really don't want you to mess with the batteries. So, here's the battery compartment. You can see there's a. Just turn up the light. Ooh, too bright. All right, you can see there's a little like arrow. Ah, oh, it's too bright. All right, there. You can see like a little arrow. Like that. So you can see all this pen. That's me trying to actually, that's for me getting this damn thing open. Um, using a tiny little flathead is much easier. You just sort of stick it in. And then it pops open. Then you just pop it open like that. So you get this like little battery dungeon. Now in order for this to work, you get this weird battery clip. And what you do with it, is you take your regular dual screen batteries, the fat ones, and you stick them like this on top of each other. One here, one like that. So it ends up looking like that. And then you just sort of, oh, it's yelling at me. And then, uh, there we go. And now the game's on. So you tuck these wires into these little um, notches here so they don't get pinched when you close it back up. And then boom, you have yourself a two-player Game & Watch, my friend. The switch before there was a switch. Sorry, let me put these controllers upright. The switch before there was a switch. Who needs to take this on rooftop part? Or who needs to take the switch rooftop part is when you got this thing. So each uh, player gets their own little mini controller. Like this little disc. It's adorable. Um, these actually aren't that expensive either. You can get one for like 60 bucks. Um, Donkey Kong Hockey at least. That's the most common one, and it's honestly the most fun one. Don't get boxing. It's a really boring game and watch. Um, unless you're trying to collect, that's fine. But I don't recommend playing or buying it for the actual gameplay. Um, you a sleepy Kokiri. There we go. So, um, player one is actually on the right, which is uh, kind of backwards from what you expect. So, we get, zoom in here. You got Mario on the right, who's player one kind of hard to see it's really fine detail here 
Let me just turn this light down a bit. You can sort of see here. You got Mario there. And then on the left, you got DK doing his thing. Ah. Looks a bit silly, but that's 80s DK. <laughs> that was before he got his little uh, Jimmy Neutron haircut. <laughs> so game A is actually playing against a computer. And I say computer loosely. I honestly, it might be RNG. I, I, I don't know how they programmed an actual CPU in 19 uh, fucking 84 <laughs> to play I don't know how they programmed AI in 1984 on a damn LCD game so I, it might just be RNG but it's still good enough to play game B is where it's at because game B is two-player mode so this game basically plays like pong on crack um, it's actually probably one of my most the most fun you're going to have playing a game and watch with people. Um, bring it to a party. It's actually kind of fun. And you can be that guy who brings the game and watch instead of the damn switch. <laughs> uh, let me pull the controller out as far as it goes so I can play from back here. So, uh, turn down this brightness. All right, just a little bit. I'll just tilt it away. Oh, there's so much glare. I hate that. There we go. That works. So, once you hit game A, <laughs> this game actually has really good music. So, you, you can hit it back and it'll increase the speed, or you can just let it bounce off of you, and it'll keep going at the same speed. These little brackets, oh my god, look how fast it's going. These little brackets in the middle, they change the direction of the ball. So if it's going straight, it'll go, it'll change to like up or down. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, these go to uh, 10 points, by the way. These games go to 10 points. Oh, shit. Ugh. You can move in this uh, three by three grid. Whoa. I, oh, Jesus Christ. And the more you hit the ball, the more you volley it, um, the faster it goes. Unless you just let it hit off your puck or hit off your stick, it'll slow it'll slow back down eventually. But if you keep pressing A, which you have to have timing to do, if you keep pressing A, it'll keep getting faster, and it's a lot harder for the other person to uh, r rally it back. Oh, shit. Oh my god, this is so hard to play and stream at the same time. Um, so if you have the timing down, you can make your opponent... Uh, you can make the uh, job for them really hard to rally it back. But the thing about hitting it is that... So you can see my stick goes up. If your stick is up... Um, when the ball is near you, it'll just pass right through you. So you... There's like a cooldown period. This game is is like fucking intense. It is, the, ugh. it is the most like intense game of pong, or it's it plays more like air hockey to be honest. Um, and the other cool thing about this one, and yes, I I'm sorry if you're upset I never brought one to Indiana, but bringing a sixty to seventy dollar, thirty something year old, handheld. An hour and a half away. Um, whoa. It's uh, not the best decision. I mean, I'll bring one, but you got to make sure it's safe. <laughs> but the cool thing about this one is it actually has really good music. It has little ditties that it plays. It's not just beeps and blops. I mean, it is, but it's like they made it into a song. And I'll show you. When I, when I select game A, I'll put the mic up to it. <laughs> so, that's a pretty cool uh, little bit of design there. 
which means it actually has a really good alarm. The alarm in this case is, um, let me look here, it's a referee time clock, of course it is. Um, I'll actually wind up the controllers back where they were because I don't need the controllers to uh, set the time, or actually I do, hang on. All right, I'll set the time to midnight, I'll set the alarm to not midnight, <laughs> or midnight plus one. There we go. I'll use this time to wind the controllers back up. So, just get that out of the way. Alright, and then you take these, these controllers and you wind them up. Ah! Like so. And they just sort of coil back in. And then there's a little red mark. It's so faint. But there's a little, oh, you can just barely see it. There's a little red mark on the wire, and that's where you wind to. And you just sort of smack it back. Uh oh. The alarm's going off. What? <laughs> it's a bit different than the other alarms. Um, actually, while I wind this up, I have to take the batteries out, so. It's not as convenient as other Game & Watches, because it is a very heavy thing. It has to carry its, um, It has to carry its controllers with it. <laughs> um, but considering it's basically a Nintendo Switch, not a big deal. Tell you what, it's a lot cheaper than a Nintendo Switch. What is a Nintendo Switch these days? Like 300 bucks? 250? Maybe? Get one of these for 60 bucks? I t it's a lot more fun than 1 2 Switch. I'll tell you that much. You're gonna have some legitimately intense games with this one. Um, I recommend getting one if you're ever serious in getting Game & Watches. If you ever are getting a Micro Versus, get this one. It's the most fun. So, I fold these controllers back up where they whir. Put them sort of like that. And then they just clam shut. And there you go. Now, size comparison. New 3DS XL. Microverses. So it's a little bit bigger than a new 3DS XL. But does a new 3DS XL have two wired controllers coming out of it? I don't think so. I don't even think the 3DS XL has an alarm. Someone can correct me on that. <clears throat> Moving on. Oh, this is going to be good. The crystal screen. I need to get a piece of paper for this one, and you'll see why. Ugh. Ugh. So I have to get a piece of paper here. Put it like this. Sort of cover it up. I'm not going to be able to use this display because the crystal screens which if you are wondering they only made two of them two different crystal screens no wait they made three they made three they are the most expensive game and watches you'll buy aside from some special edition ones and they are completely see-through well not completely the game screen is see-through blah 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 I just got this crystal screen a little bit ago probably about a month ago um, these are the most expensive ones you'll get this one cost me 
multiple hundreds of dollars, more than one, less than three hundreds of dollars. Um, because they, it's just really rare to find one of these things loose. Most of the time you'll find them, um, in box, like mint condition and stuff like that, or in box with their manuals and all of that. These are the, the most, one of, some of the most advanced Game & Watches you'll find. Yes, so 200. I just didn't want to, it was actually 199 or 190 or something like that. I just didn't want, I don't, I don't want to show off like, wow, I spent this much money on a Game & Watch. Yeah. When your collection needs to be complete, it needs to be complete. So these ones actually have like really modern looking construction. You can see here, crystal screen. These don't have the, uh, <clears throat> you can see from the back. This one was made in 1986. So we're getting on a bit. Gaming watches were made from 80 to 90, 91, 90. Basically when the Game Boy came out, right after. Um, Cause why would you get you know, a Game & Watch that plays one game and you can get a Game Boy. Um, so, Crystal Screens, they made Climber, which you'll see why it's called that in a bit. They made Super Mario Brothers, which, oh my god, if you need to buy, if you buy one Game & Watch, and only one Game & Watch, get the Super Mario Brothers widescreen. Um, I say that instead of the crystal screen because the crystal screen probably will cost you $300. Um, but the widescreen ones are going for like 50 to 80. Um, the Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch is incredible. It has like multiple levels. It has like 12 or 14 levels with different music. And like, how do they do all this with LCD? I don't know. Um, you can f maybe find one of the um, keychain versions on eBay for like 20 to $30 if you do not care about having an original. But if you were to buy one original Game & Watch, make it a Super Mario Bros. one. Anyway, uh, gushing over. This doesn't actually have the, uh, the toothpick buttons, which I can't find my toothpick. Uh-oh. I'll have to just use a screwdriver. Uh, it doesn't have the little pencil buttons. You can actually press these with your thumb. But they're like flush. Um, it's like plastic, clear plastic construction. Super thin. Like really, really thin. In fact, here's Ball from 1980. It is about 75% as thick as a silver edition. Um, but it's like solid, like everything is clean and you never, you'll never find one of these things in bad condition because these crystal screens are so rare. The only ones that are left are the expensive ones. So these ones actually use a different battery because they're so thin. Getting these things battery covers off with with the when it doesn't have a battery in it is a pain in the ass. Cause you have to you have to push it up like that, and then you have to pull it back. You have to like lift it up, which I'm gonna just use my screwdriver here. You have to lift it up and then you have to pull it out like that. Which, if I can find my battery bag. What the f there it is. Blah, 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 blah. Luckily, when I bought this, it came with a battery. Thank God. You think I paid enough for it, you know? So, they use these batteries which are legitimate watch batteries, super uh, wide and thin. 
you just sort of sit right there. But getting the battery cover off is a lot easier when it already has a battery in it because the battery sort of pushes it out already. There we go. You can see. Ah, it's going to be a pain in the ass with this light glaring off. Just turn it off. As you can see here, let's sit that back a bit. There it is. It thinks it's 12.07. I'm just going to ACL it again. So, this is actually the only Game & Watch I've seen that when you reset it, it doesn't cover the whole screen with all of its cells filled. It's just this screen right here. Now, this game basically plays like a game of uh, ice climbers. And I'll show you. So you got these little beasties going back and forth. And you just sort of jump. Watch out for the birds. And as you jump, okay, these little, the guys on the ground, they're actually like living brick men. Oh, and um, with when they encounter an empty space, they actually become part of the floor. You can use that to your advantage if you're worried about a guy hitting you. Oh, come on. Ugh. You can also walk to the other side, like classic arcade games. If you're worried about a guy messing things up, you can just make an empty spot for him to, to make himself into a brick. Oh boy. Like that. So he's going to walk over here and make a platform for me. So you jump up, you jump up, and the number on the top isn't actually your score, it's how many levels you have left to jump up. So it gives you a sense of progression as you jump up. You gotta watch out for the birds. I wanna get to the top because it's basically ice climbers where you f jump onto a condor, and there's like a little bonus section, it's great. So here's the summit of the mountain. And then you have to jump on this condor here, so see if I can time it right. Hey! Ah! And this game actually, it's one of the more advanced Game & Watches, so it actually has really good music. Oh my god. Bentley! Get down! <laughs> And you actually fall all the way down here, so let me just show you. The higher you go up, the more you fall when you die. <laughs> so watch out, I'm just gonna jump and fall real quick. And there you go. It actually has a pretty interesting uh, alarm too. It's like, but it's so quiet. I don't know why the crystal screens are so damn quiet. Probably because a lot of the other game watches, they'll have uh, like, you can see the speaker of this thing. This little circle right here is the speaker on ball. So it's plenty loud. But this thing, you can't see any speaker at all. So it's like super quiet and it's so robust. I feel like you could like, I don't know, smack somebody with it and it would leave a mark or something. Um, but it's too expensive to do that. So don't do that. Um, yeah, that's the crystal screen. Super advanced for LCD technology, I gotta say. Um, legitimately fun game. Like, you could buy one of these and it would be the same as getting, like, Ice Climbers for the Game Boy Advance or the NES or something like that. Can't beat that. Oh, boy. The Panorama and the Tabletop. This is going to be a little difficult because right now I have my lighting behind me. 
um, right there. But with panoramas and tabletops, the way they work, or the way they need to work, is that right here, they need to have light coming through here, up top. So I'm gonna have to move my lighting around. And before I do that, I need to get to the new widescreens. Right here, new widescreen. This is when, um, this is basically the like Wii Mini of the Game & Watch line, or like the PS2 Slim. Um, they ported a lot of, you're like, why would they go back to widescreen? Well, it's cheap. It's cheap to buy, it's cheap to make. So um, they ported a lot of the crystal screens and the tabletops and the panoramas and stuff that's expensive um, for the consumers. They poured a lot of these to like watered down widescreen versions. And they also made like remakes of, uh, of like gold series games and stuff and earlier widescreens to new widescreens. And they look a little bit different than old widescreens. As you can see, here's an old widescreen. There's no logo or anything. It's just fire attack. Here, um, you have Tropical Fish with its own logo. And then you have a little, like, art dude. You can see he's holding this Tropical Fish Bowl with a metallic finish. Um, these came in all sorts of colors, unlike the, oh, Jesus, unlike the old widescreens, which uh, did not. They came in black and gold. Um, but they essentially, they're identical to old widescreens. Um, as you can see, this has writing from the last guy who owned it, or maybe a, a kid who owned it. His name is Drew Nishizaki. Um, you can rub this off. You can rub writing off with uh, rubbing alcohol whenever you are collecting. Um, but I decided to leave it on because I think it adds a bit of authenticity. Um, I had to get a battery cover for it. It did not come with a battery cover. Um, you can buy battery covers on eBay for like $3. And um, I'm actually going to bend over just a bit. Okay. And... Uh, this is actually what I'm going to be taking apart for you guys. As you can see, there's this weird cloud here on the screen. It's sort of like dirty looking. When your Game & Watch looks like this, your reflector screen is bad. Um, if the characters show up perfectly fine, which in this case, I'll put some batteries in it and show you. Get in my battery bag here. Da, 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 da. Derp, da, derp, da, derp. Put the batteries in. I know it didn't have a battery cover, but I'd rather spend the $3 and get a much better condition tropical fish because this is actually kind of a rare widescreen. There we go. It kind of makes it, the the characters show up fine, but the dark dirtiness of the reflector screen sort of makes it hard to see. You can just sort of like that. So it kind of ruins the experience a bit. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. See how you kind of have to angle it up to see everything. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Same thing happened with my uh, oil panic. I replaced both screens of that and the polarizers. So, things you will need. You will need some sort of marking tool, a pencil, a pen, 
um, a dry erase marker, something fine enough, but to work on small places, but thick enough that you can see it. You will need a small flathead screwdriver. And that's really all you'll need. And you'll need your replacement part too. Um, in this case, it's the reflector screen. It can be the reflector, the polarizer, and that's basically the only ones that are really gonna be destroyed. Um, if your Game & Watch has screen bleeding, like the blackness is sort of bleeding, it's gone, it's dead, you, it's spare parts. Um, once the screen starts to bleed, there's nothing you can do to fix that. The LCD is actually built into the glass itself, and I'll show you how. So, wide screens are really easy to take apart. You take your flathead, and there's six screws right here on the back, right? Just take those off. And I've already taken most of my Game & Watches apart already and put them back together. So I could do this in my sleep. Granted, it's not very uh, hard to do. So, make sure you keep track of these screws because there are no replacements. They are special designed by Nintendo, I guess. I don't know, I've never seen a screw like them. And uh, I've never seen a place where you can order replacement screws so you'd be stuck buying junked uh, Game & Watches for like 30 bucks and getting the parts for them. There we are. So, once all these screws are out, there's a little notch right here in the top. You slide that forward on the notch. Once these screws are out, so pour these screws out. Bop it up it up it up. This one's being stubborn. There we go. So all your screws are right here. These are the long ones. There's gonna be long screws and short screws. So keep track and don't mix and match. They will not work like that. So once all the screws in the back plate are off, you push it forward. You lift and push forward and out comes the back plate. This is where your speaker is, soldered here to the motherboard and soldered again to the back plate. Be careful not to crimp these wires too hard when you are putting these uh, machines back together. Um, the last thing you want is to get rid of all of your Game & Watch's sound. So don't cut them unless you have a soldering iron on hand, which I do not. Now. Older Game & Watches did not have this, but with new widescreens, you got these little circles surrounding the screws that you need to take out. Um, older ones, the Gold Series, the Silver Series, they don't have those, so you want to make sure to mark, once you take these screws out, you want to make sure to mark next to the hole where they go, because you don't want to mix up a backplate hole with a motherboard hole, if that makes any sense. Because the same screws cannot go in them, they are of different size. So, you ba ba ba, take out, there's four screws in this model. It's so cool, you can see like in the back, it's like unadjusted, made in Japan, blah blah blah, Nintendo, uh, someone from Nintendo back in 1984 or whatever this was made, let's check the date, 85, put this together, and I think that's really cool. So luckily these have circles around where you have to put the motherboard screws, no guarantees that you're Wide your old widescreen or your dual screen, which are basically just two widescreens stacked on top of each other. There's no guarantee that they're going to have that, so make sure you mark next to the hole where you, you take out your motherboard screw. Blah, 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 blah. All right. 
after you set them aside and keep your screws sorted like that this is the fun part you very carefully remove the motherboard from the front plate so you can see here this is your front plate I don't wanna here I'll just hold these I'll just hold these in so you got your front plate here if you're replacing your polarizer this is where you do it make sure if you put your polarizer in backwards all of your game watch is gonna look black and your characters are gonna look white it's gonna be very weird all right that's what I want it to look like Ah oh, shit hang on I gotta put the the little ACL and alarm buttons are these tiny tiny little guys right here you gotta make sure they're in correctly you put those in and then you put the uh, rubber pieces back in in their respective you know this goes here and this goes here and then your big buttons right here they go like that so once that's done once the because we're replacing the reflector screen here so I'm gonna set the front plate aside because we're not doing anything with the polarizer though um, you can clean polarizers and you can um, clean front plates as well you can clean the overlays uh, with soap and water and it'll get most of the dirt off of it make it the game a lot clearer if you're restoring one that's been um, go to sleep now plan on watching the video tomorrow no problem man once I show off the panorama and tabletop I'll be on my way out too Okay, so since we're replacing the reflector screen here, there it is. Let me just get this back plate out of the way. Here's your motherboard. Um, I recommend getting a pair of tweezers for this. So, you take your tiny little screwdriver and you ever so slightly go under the glass. Just push it a tiny bit. Just a tiny, 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 tiny bit. Where did I put my tweezers? Here they are. Then you take your tweezers, your needle nose, something tiny that can fit under here. And you just ever so gently pull out that reflector screen like so. As you can see, it's pretty well ruined. If it has a mark like this, it's moisture damage most likely because um, someone didn't store their game and watch in a cool and dry place it happens so the original 1985 reflector screen is pretty much shot um, you cannot clean reflector screens they are laminated um, sort of glossy things they are what make your they basically give the backdrop of your game give it like a white space for the black characters to go on um, so there's no real fixing one but you can buy reflector screens replacements for like, I don't know, I think mine was like $6 or $7. It takes a while to get to you because the manufacturers, like the guys who make these, they're in like Spain and stuff. So you got to get them on eBay for like 7 bucks. And I've been holding off on showing this on stream for that, that long because... Um, like it just took that long for the reflector screen to get here. So, this one's shot. <clears throat> so, I have the replacement here. You can kind of see. Here's the microchip or whatever they use to power this damn thing. Wow, crazy. Now, 
Here's the replacement reflector screen. They come in squares like this, um, cut usually to widescreen size because that's what most Game & Watch screens are. Um, if you want to use it on a gold screen or a silver, just cut it down. Just put the other reflector screen in front of it and just cut to size. It's just a, it, when it comes down to it, it's a silver piece of paper. That's all it is. So. This one comes with a little laminated thing you peel off like a sticker so it doesn't already get dirty. So you peel that off. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, reflecting. Wow. So you peel that off. Oh, this one's all sticky. Goopy. Hmm. interesting it's like a sticker so does the back peel off not sure it does but should make it easier not to come out again so you just sort of slide that inside ever so gently because there's a lot of wires and shit going on in here make sure it's pretty well flush you can kind of see the reflections of the overlay on the glass which is pretty crazy all right so your old reflector screen's gone bye bye and now you take your motherboard and you take your front plate and you stick your motherboard back onto your front plate. Make sure all the holes line up. You kind of use the batteries bracket for uh, guidance here. And then you should still have your, um, mm, you should still have your small screws just this is the very important part make sure also if you mess with the polarizer screen remember which order the polarizer screen um, and also if you want to make sure you can also just flip it like that oh that's already so much better okay if it looks dark you put your polarizer screen backwards um, make sure you put on your overlay of the right setup one time I was fixing my oil panic and I realized that I put on the um, overlay upside down um, when it said low eye instead of oil on it so make sure you do that correctly so you take your small screws luckily the new white screen has them labeled for us you just sort of now this is the important part do not screw on that tight. As soon as you feel resistance, stop. Stop. So, um, I have gotten myself into a lot of trouble by tightening these too tight and making the buttons not work and the screen flicker. These are delicate things when you're putting them back together. They were put together by a guy who was trained to do so in Japan in the 80s. Sort of put these on there. You can still see the inspection marker from 1985 too. So you screw that one on. Sort of go in like a crisscross fashion with these like uh, corner, 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 corner. Like corner 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 that way um, you make sure that the back plate gets on just right if you tighten one side too high or too tight and then the other side not as it won't close properly you also got to make sure that it's nice and flush sometimes when you move buttons around the button pads uh, it'll mess up oh boy Careful not to scratch the motherboard. Whew. 
This is so hard to do with a table in front of me. You should see the setup I have to do for this. All right. Oh, where's my other tiny screw? Ah, Jesus. Where's my other tiny screw? One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm missing a tiny screw. There it is. Woo, that was scary. I recommend getting a magnet plate if you have one or um, a cup to put each of the screws in because the last thing you want to do is lose these things. You will not get replacements unless you buy parts, Game & Watches, which are still not very cheap. They're just cheaper than actual Game & Watches. Okay, so with that screwed on, you can test the buttons on the front plate. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, um, that's also on the motherboard. You take off the buttons and you rub the contact points with rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip. If you have unresponsive buttons, that's what you do. Just clean the contact points. So, you put your back plate back on, make sure you don't fold the damn wires onto themselves. That's what's happening. It's backwards. Luckily, this one is pretty well laid out. So you just sort of boop, 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 boop. make sure it. You sort of kind of got to go like that. Yeah, I'll show you. It's just you sort of put it on like that, and then slide it over the notch. Then you hold it down like that, like it's giving you money. And it's gonna be bouncy. It's it's not gonna want to close um, because the wires on the speaker are gonna be pushing it up. That's why, whatever side it is not wanting to close at, that's where you start screwing your backplate screws back in. And these ones you can be pretty tight with. Um, don't squeeze the damn thing, but you can be pretty tight with it. And then you crisscross over to the other side. Boop. And I'm doing this slow on purpose. I could do this in like five minutes. Especially with a Silver Series because they only have like four screws total. <laughs> they really slapped those things together back in the day. Um, but I'm trying to be slow for you guys and also the fact that I'm streaming this at the same time. Okay. And I'll just boop. Scooby boop bop 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 boop ba. like that. And you put this one in there. And don't worry, guys, if this is boring you, the Panorama and the Tabletop series, last but not least, definitely not least, are coming next. So once I move, once I put this back together and move my lighting to the other side. I'll show you guys the wonders that is the panorama screen and the tabletop series. So cool how they did stuff back then. Nerding out pretty hard. Here we are. And there we go. Look how much cleaner it looks already. <clears throat> Make sure it's on correctly. Yeah, that should work. Okay, get the batteries in. Please do this right. Yes, yes, yes. Look at that. It's clean and it's beautiful and I love it. Unfortunately, there's not much to show you about Tropical Fish. Um, you know, I'll just play a little bit for you. So you basically just want, um, you got two fish tanks 
and you're just trying to uh, catch the fish in the bowl as they jump from one tank to the other because you have a kitty cat right there and like cats do they like messing with you so if you drop one the kitty cat comes out and eats one and throws out the bones <laughs> it's pretty interesting here I'll drop one so you dropped one here and the kitty's like oh I got that shit and he throws out the bones look at the bones ah so that's all there really is to tropical fish um, I wanted it because it was another it was a more rare like most new widescreens are either ports or remakes of other Game and & Watches and by remakes I mean like they remade a 1981 Game & Watch in 1985. It's not like... They're not reproductions. They're just ports, basically. Or um, or they're from bigger, more uh, complex Game & Watches, like uh, the tabletops. Or oh, the crystal screens. <clears throat> but I wanted one that was original. And one that also represented Game & Watches Nair. So we're going to move on to the, pan, uh, to the tabletop series, which means I have to move my lighting around. So if you'll just give me one sec. All right, that may look very bright, but trust me, it is completely necessary. Just want to make sure that this works. Uh, a little bit further back. That should do it. Okay, good. Now I have to go grab my tabletop because it is that big. Bam. <laughs> It is a honking thing. I can't even fit it in frame. All right. Now, the tabletop. Pretty ridiculous machine. Basically a mini arcade cabinet. Um, if you can see, it's uh, quite a bit bigger than <laughs> other Game & Watches. A lot of that is empty space. I've taken these things apart, and they could shrink them down a lot more than they have. Um, but, I mean, it's supposed to be on a table. Like, like it's, uh, it's a mini arcade cabinet. So I'm actually going to point it up at this screen here. Okay, let's see here. How can I make this better? I need like a block or something to put this on. Here we go. <clears throat> Hang on. Take off my camera rig. <clears throat> ah. 
Sorry if you're motion sick. My apologies. The tabletop is just that vast. There we are. Stick that on like that, and there you go. Okay, now, thing with tabletops is that they need light shining down at them. I don't need that, I just kind of need that. And I don't need this light. I can turn that off. They need light shining down at them. The way this works is that this right here, the screen itself, like the actual game, is actually upside down right here. I'll turn up the light just to show you. It's actually right here, upside down. And what happens is light comes down through this um, plastic here, shines through the upside down game shines into this mirror which um, you can see is in front of you and shows the video screen and shows this the game screen in the back of the arcade cabinet I think that's pretty cool now the thing with tabletops is unlike a little watch batteries these guys use C batteries which are heavier than most actual Game & Watches so I'm gonna put the batteries in plop plop there we go this is a problematic tabletop to get one working in perfect order it's like hundreds of dollars guys it's it's pretty ridiculous I mean they're amazing machines but to get one to work just right it's just a pain in the ass so I'll show you here this is actually what you see it's in color which I think is pretty amazing um, let's see if I can get better lighting here so if I move this out of the way, just sort of do that. Oh, there we go. So if I bring this in, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. It's like a little mini arcade machine and it's in color. This one in particular is Mario Cement Factory, as you can see. Um, so if you play it, it actually has, this is actually the most advanced in terms of like sound and like music and stuff like that. So if I press game A, you can kind of see. It's like a full fledged thing. Unfortunately, a lot of the cells aren't working. Oh, Jesus. A lot of the cells aren't working. I mean, some are, but it's not a functional game. You kind of have to guess where Mario is sometimes, and it's really just for show at this point. But I can see, like, they made a, a lot of different tabletops. And uh, if you can find one that works in, like, decent condition, get it, because it is a cool piece of tech. Look at that. Here, I'll die on purpose here. Uh, here we go. <laughs> it's kind of charming. Um, I'll see if I can get the alarm to work here. First of all, I'll ACL it. Time. It looks like some of the buttons got chewed up. I took this thing apart multiple times, tried to make it work. It's just not happening. Um, I'll fix it 
totally some other time. But taking the tabletops apart is much more of a pain in the ass than uh, the smaller Game & Watches. So once this thing's alarm goes off, I don't even know how to tell if it's on because there's so many cells that are just dead in this thing. Um, that, to me, w when your Game & Watch has dead cells and there's no screen bleeding or anything, it means that there's bad connections going on. Like, you'll see with my panorama, sometimes one cell doesn't light up. You just got to, like, smack it a bit or, you know, it's just it's a faulty connection somewhere. Some rubbing alcohol or taking it apart and putting it back together more gently will do will help with that. But, I mean... You got your arcade uh, controls here. Oh. Alarm's going off. You can kind of see it here. And you can also see it's actually playing up there. And you can see, if I put my hand here, you can see my finger in front of the screen. Like that. I don't know why you'd need an alarm on something this fucking big. Like, this fucking bit here. I'll, I'll move back the rig as far as I can. Something this big? Like... Like, here's another Game & Watch. <laughs> it is a full-size machine. This thing's about the size of a Virtual Boy. It is big, but it's in actual color, and it's like, it's like a weird version of like backlighting. It's like a low-tech backlit screen. It's really cool, actually. Um, if I find one in better condition for a hundred dollars or less, I'm definitely going to try to get one to replace this one. I'll use the, this one as parts or something. I don't know, but they had some really cool, uh, like they had a Donkey Kong uh, Junior one so it's like having a little arcade machine in your house it's really cool so I'll set that aside now obviously as cool as the tabletop is it's pretty clunky right so in order to make it smaller Nintendo came out with this chunky boy the panorama screen does this plastic look familiar that's because this part right here does the exact same thing as this thing right here. Just a lot less chunky. And the way they get around that, it uses, um, I also this also didn't have a battery cover, no biggie. Or it didn't have an original. Original battery covers are like, they're 20 to $30. It's really not worth it in my opinion. <clears throat> Let me get one of these batteries. They use um, the thick batteries, the same as uh, any of the multi screens. So I'll put them there. I forget what they call it. Uh, they call it LR44. <clears throat> now. Now, when was this Mario's Cement Factory made? The tabletop was made in 1983. The exact same year, Nintendo came out with this boy, panorama screen. So, when you what, what you do is you see this little arrow, it says open. You just flick that open like that. Sort of press that, make sure all the cells are lighting up. There we go. And boom. You have color. Look at that. So it's basically a portable version of the tabletop. Light shines through here. And you can see the mirror. This whole front screen here is actually just a mirror. You can see. And it's playing this is actually the screen itself upside down light shines through it shines through the color overlay and what you get is actually if i zoom back in here
what you get is this. That is fucking cool, I think. So when I say Mario was an EOD officer in the army, this is what I'm talking about. This is Mario's bombs away. Really, this is like metal, by the way. This piece is right here, metal. This is a chunky piece of machinery. And it is, let's see if I can get my 3DS out about the same length as a DS and about the same thickness. So it's still portable. And it doesn't need that much battery as a DS does um, because its screen is backlit by the sky. <laughs> so light shines through here, shines up into the mirror. I have my cat joining me here. And what you get, let me put the mic closer to the game so you can hear. <laughs> A bit more advanced than most game watches. So the object of this game, I'll bring it close, is... You have to bring the... Uh-oh. You're basically bringing a bomb over to the other side for them to throw up into the canopy of the trees. But there's dudes there with torches going up and down. Oh, there, I got one in there. And there's also a guy throwing cigars on this trail of oil here. If I can just get a better shot that also goes down that length. So you can either ha hold the bomb up or you can hold the bomb down. Oh, and there's so it's such a weird 3D effect with the way this light works, it's crazy. So you can either hold the bomb up or down. So you have to constantly switch between holding the bomb up and down depending on if the flame on the oil and the cigar is traveling or if the guy on top of you is, oh, there we go. Or if the guy on t on top of you is pulling his uh, torch towards you. And as you go, obviously, the game gets harder. I'm just trying to get five bombs in a row for you guys. So I can show you what happens. The trail on the oil goes a lot slower than the, uh, the guys with torches. As you can see, I ah, missed. You have to get five bombs in a row to blow them all up, basically. There we go. So you have to go back and forth. And I just blew up. There we go. Let's get a little bit more zoomed in. Mario be blowing up, bro. Show that real, real close. Like it's kind of hard because it's actually a mirror image. Uh, I'm gonna try one more time. This actually doesn't have too crazy of an alarm. It's kind of like nothing too crazy. Um, but I'm gonna show you. It's so. It's such a weird thing. It looks backlit, but it's not. And it's a weird thing, because it's like, how do they get color out of black and white LCD? This is like having a color calculator. And not only that, it looks like 3D. I, it, I can't, sh I can't, obviously, I can't portray it through um, the, uh, I can't portray it through the screen, through the camera, but, um, because Game & Watches are basically layers of different films, the trees are like in the background, but the cutout of it is in the foreground, so the trees kind of look 3D. It's very interesting.
And I'll show you guys here. Put that up. Come on, dude. Take the bomb. There we go. He'll only take the bomb if he has his hands out. Whoa, that was close. Come on, lift up the torch. There we go. Come on, dude. Grab the bomb. There we go. Oh, fuck. I'm never going to get this this whole thing to blow up. It's so cool. Here, I'll just uh, toothpick it real quick. Regular ACL buttons, just like normal. So you can see here at the top. Um, they all sort of blow up and they're like, whoa, no, it's very cartoony. And like, you never think of Mario as looking like that. Like, what, that's Mario. Like, what the hell? He definitely doesn't look like any Mario. He's like early 80s Mario, you know what I mean? So, anyway, that's the last of my uh, Game & Watch collection. Like, originals, you know what I mean? So, um, thank you guys for tuning in for me blathering on about my Game & Watches and their history and whatnot. take out these batteries sort of a double thing here um, if you're looking into getting into Game & Watch collecting a good place to start would be the uh, mini classics series these little uh, if, all, if all you care about is the games themselves and not actually owning the original Game & Watches um, a good place to start would be the Mini Classic series. They come in little keychain ver key versions. They even have little mini dual screen versions too of the Legend of Zelda one. Um, the Legend of Zelda one is actually like one of the best handheld games I've ever played in my life. It has like a boss that you fight and like three different dudes and items you collect. Like you can get like holy water or whatever or water of life or whatever they call it. It's crazy. Um... If you're looking to get into Game Watch collecting for realsies, um, I got all of mine on eBay. Uh, you have to be very discerning. Uh, you can get most like wide screens and new wide screens like this for about 50 bucks, 60. Um, some of the more common dual screen ones, like Oil Panic and Blackjack, is like 40 dollars or 30. Um, Oil Panic I got for like 60 um, Lion and Ball I got for a package deal. 50 each. I paid 100 for both of them. And uh, the Microverses is actually a super fun one. You can get that for about... I don't know. You can get the, most of those for about 60 Basically, if you want to buy a Game & Watch, you can basically buy a brand new game. But... Brand new game holds it, or the brand new game does not hold its value like a game and watch. Um, these have already pretty much bottomed out, and if you keep it in the same condition, you can sell it for the same price. So, um, if you're looking to get into game and watch collecting, knowing which ones to get, um, I recommend this the unofficial game and watch collector's guide. You can get this on the internet, written by um, these very German people, or actually they're from Austria. Um, you can get, they haven't, obviously there's an English version, but this has basically everything you'll need to know. They use the same alarm bell as in Mario Brothers. But, um, everything you need to know about every game and watch big and small in I don't know how many 100 200 glossy pages it's a high quality book it's not cheap it cost me like 60 US dollars but if you are looking to get into game and watch collecting get the guide and it's just a good read like you can learn so much history about these things they even have like rarity things here yeah, that's not a good example They have like little rarity examples here at the bottom. And then they have the price charts. 
you can what you can expect like what they originally went for back in the day and what you can expect to pay for it now it's all in euros but it gives you an idea like for instance the oil panic loose uh average auction price 38 euros that's about 50 bucks so i recommend doing that and also shows little game and watch trivia etc etc so anyway i won't waste any more of you guys' time um thank you for watching and uh tuning into my game and watch show and tell um, I'm just happy to have the collection complete. Of course, there's still another 50 or so gaming watches I don't have, but I'm just glad to have the ones I have. So thanks for tuning in, guys. I'm going to end the stream here.